Okay, uh, so far we are familiar with how to compute uh, double integrals over rectangular regions. So now we are going to talk how to uh, compute double integrals over general regions, not necessarily rectangular regions. So it is going to be somewhat harder, but uh, uh, that's basically what the rest of the lecture is going to be about. Okay, um, now, so suppose that uh, we have a region in the plane that looks like this. Uh, so here, um, x is varies from uh, some some constants a, a and b, and x varies from um, some functions of x, g one and g g one of x and g two of x, right? Uh, so now this is called a region of of type one. Uh, so n not every region in the plane is of type one. So l l let me explain um, how it works, right? So if you have our plane, right? So, and you, you have some, something like this, right? So I don't know. Then basically, uh, so here, if this is, so here, if X is A and here X is B, Right. So now, what, what you've got to to look at is uh, is the, this part. Sorry, this part, and this, this is going to be g two of x, and maybe this part, and this is the function g one of x. Now, if our region can be represented in kind of in such such a manner. Then it is type one, right? So then it is type one. Type one. Uh, but not all regions are of type one. So in, in order for a region in the plane to be of type one, so every vertical line, well, except of extreme x equals y and x equals b. So whatever is in between, if if you draw any vertical line, then it should intersect the boundary of our region at at most two points. At, well, at exactly two points, basically, right? Because uh, g1 of x and g2 of x uh, are supposed to be functions of x, so which means that the graph, well, the graph of a function um, must satisfy the vertical line test. So the graph of a function intersects with every vertical line at most once. So here we have two functions, so the intersection is at most twice, right? So if our region um, is not of the, this form, so imagine the region that looks like this, right? So here, if you draw a vertical line, so then it's going to intersect our region four times. So this is not a region of type one. Okay, so, but if our region is of type one, uh, then it means that here X is from A to B and for every fixed value of X, uh, Y is from G1 of X to G2 of X. And basically, this is how we can describe it. So note the notation. So we have parentheses. So D means the set of all points of X and Y where X is between A and B and Y is uh, between G1 uh, of X and G2 of X. So G1 of X and G2 of X are some specific expressions in, in X. So we will look at examples uh, later. Right, so and in, in that case, Fubini's theorem. So basically, this this is also called Fubini's theorem. I think Fubini's theorem um, is that it tells us that um, in in that case we can uh, compute the double integral over the region as the iterated in integral where we first integrate with respect to to y, and then we integrate with respect to x. But note that now the difference between this method and uh, rectangular regions is that now when we integrate with respect to y, we are integrating from some function of x to some other function of x. Right? So which kind of makes it harder. Uh, but anyway, so here is the picture. You can stare at it. Um, I hope it makes sense to you. Um, but let me go through an example. So here we need to evaluate, uh, well, compute some, some integral uh, over a region bounded between two parabolas, right? So Usually, when we uh, say between um, parabolas, we kind of mean that the first is, is lower, the second is upper limit. But 
let's just plot the these parabolas to 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 see whether it really uh, is true so um did he, this did this is let me um, um draw the plane x x y and we have two parabolas y equals 2x squared so 2x squared well it, it's not on the scale but it, it looks like this right so i mean the, this is a parabola so this is y equals 2x squared now let, let me pick a different color um and, and draw the second parabola so the second parabola so know that the coefficient at x square here is bigger than the coefficient at x square here so which means that for large values of, of x the first parabola kind of goes to infinity faster so it's kind of steeper right at the same time near zero the first parabola um the value of the first parabola is is is, is uh, zero and the value um for when x is zero the value of the second well quadratic function is one right so the second quadratic function is kind of is uh, the the first is steeper but the the the, the, the second one is um bigger near zero so which schematically means that it looks like this this is the second variable y equals one sorry uh, plus x squared okay so this is what it looks like and now now it's clear you know what, what the region is it's just between the, these two parabolas so this is our d and uh we should probably figure out how to find the, these two points if this is a and this is b how do we find a and b well notice that at, at these two points the values of the two two two, two versions of y two two parables they intersect so which means that really two x square equals one plus x square so this is the equation to find a and b well i'm um, moving x square to the left hand side i get x square is, is one and x is plus minus one which essentially means that a is is negative one and, and b is one right so now it's kind of clear what the region of integration looks like and what the limits of integration should be uh maybe let me ju just to convince you and to maybe help you to visualize it so let me do it in desmos so so the uh, first parabola probably is 2x square right so it's kind of a bit steep the second parabola is not so steep but it's uh this is what it looks like and then if you if you really want to uh to to take uh, to, to look at the region between the two parabolas then i guess you can do an inequality so one plus uh, 2x square is less than or equal than y is less than or equal than one plus square. so this is the region between the two parabolas and and, and as you see so here x is negative one and here x is, is one right so it, it works out so our calculations are accurate okay so uh, it, it really means that our integral is the following so first we've got to to use the constant limits of integration for x right so x changes from minus one to one and then we've got to uh, to to apply the change in variable change in limits of integration for, for y and they are from 2x squared to 1 plus x squared and the function the integrand is x plus 2y dy dx right so this is um our integral in, in the end of the day so in the end of the day we need to evaluate this iterated integral right but again so the, the hardest part here is to uh, to to write it down actually it's not to to evaluate it it, it is relatively simple although though, though there are some um kind of um, a little tricks here so th this is the, the sketch handwritten sketch um and uh let me do the integration now right so uh this is the integral from minus one to one uh from two x square to one plus x square x plus 2y dy dx and again so first let me do the inside integral first and i'm going to split it into two parts so one that does not have y and the other one that has y right so uh, there are two parts and you know x 
does not depend on y. So when x does not depend on y, and we are integrating with respect to y, so we can just take it out, right? So this integral is, is really just x times the integral from 2x squared, 1 plus x squared dy plus the integral from 1 plus x squared to, I'm um, sorry, yeah. Uh, from 2x squared to 1 plus x squared uh, to y dy. Right now, this is kind of easy because here we are integrating just one, right? So, and we are integrating just one. The answer is the upper limit of integration minus the lower limit of integration. So we don't even have to, to write down the antiderivative. So this is going to be x times one plus x squared upper limit of integration minus two x squared lower limit of integration plus and the, the second integral we've got to uh, you know properly integrate it so the antiderivative of 2y is y squared and we've got to change of y squared from 2x squared to 1 plus Maybe it is better to, to indicate that this is y, and um, it's really up to you. So here, the, there is no x to, to mess around, so to, to mess with, you know, the, the things, so it's kind of easier, right? Uh, so this whole thing becomes, um, well, um, x times 1 minus x squared. This is the first uh, term, and the second term is is the change of in y square so plus i've got to replace y with one plus x squared so it is one plus x squared squared minus now and i need to replace y with two x squared so two x squared squared okay nice so i'm going to continue so this is really x minus x cube it was the first term, so plus. Now I've got to do the, the square, so the, this is done. Now I've got to do this the square, so 1 plus 2x squared plus x to the 4. Second term is done, and minus 4x to the 4. Okay, uh, and I guess that that's it, so maybe, um, I guess, x to the 4 minus 4x to the 4 is really minus 3x to the 4. So we can rewrite it minus, minus 3x to the 4. So this integral becomes the integral from minus 1 to 1 um, of what? So let me just rewrite everything. So 1 um, plus x in the order of increasing um, increasing uh, degree. So plus 2x squared plus 2x squared. So let me just remove 1 uh, 2x squared. So then the next term is minus x cubed and minus 3x to the 4 dx. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, um, now I'm going to show you a little trick. So when um, to compute the, the, this integral, so notice that uh, the limits of integration are symmetric from negative one to one, right? Okay, this is important. So let me um, change the color again. This is important. So symmetric limits of integration from negative one to one. But then uh, you need to recall that this uh, simple fact that the integral of an odd function over a symmetric interval is zero. So which means that, you know, this and this terms disappear. Well, I don't know. So the, let me maybe schematically explain why, why this is true, right? So if you take, say, the integral from negative, uh, say, from for, for x cubed, right? So then basically you, you get like these two areas, this this comes with minus sign, this comes with plus sign, and together they just cancel each other. Right? So, which is why this happens. 
so the, the, these two terms are going to disappear and um, the other three terms so one two x squared so they're even terms and uh, for them the integral can be just taken from zero to one and multiplied by two right so the, the, this whole integral becomes really just the integral of two times the integral from zero to one of one plus 2x squared minus 3x to the fourth dx. And then I'm going to continue. Uh, okay, so the first term is 2. The second term is 2 times 2 times 1 third. Um, so plus 4 times 1 third. And again, so I, I did the antiderivative just, just in my head, so you can you know verify my uh, calculations if you want. I've done it so many times that I can just do it in my head. So minus 2 times 3 times 1 fifth. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 1 fifth. Right, so here is the answer. So, and I guess we can just write it as 3 and 5. Uh, so something over 15. So 2 uh, is really 30 over 15 plus uh, 4 to get over 15, I need to multiply by 5, so plus 20 over 15, and minus 6. So now it is over 5. To get over 15, I must multiply by 3, so minus uh, 18. And this is going to be 30 plus 20 minus... 20 minus 18 is 2, so this is 32 over uh, 15. That's the answer. Okay, and I guess here is the answer uh, in printed form for you. Um, but in printed form, they kind of omitted the, this part. <laughs> oh, well, um, so I have just explained to you how, how to, to do it kind of in an easy easy manner if you notice um, some, some symmetry. Okay, so that's all for uh, part four.